Okay. Good afternoon, Excellencies. Excellencies. Excellencies? Okay. And honorable guests, distinguished, no, this delegate. But I mean, really, do you want me to say all of these things? Because I feel, I just feel so funny saying all of that. I, I'm from the Bronx. Can I just beat myself and say what I want to say? No, but it's not that I'm going to stand there and say, you know, what's up, que lo que, dimelo. I'm not going to do that, but I, I just want, I will be appropriate. I just don't want to have to be so formal, and I already feel very nervous, and I just, but the rehearsal is making me more nervous. No, it's making me more nervous. I really don't want to be nervous, because whenever I get nervous, I start to talk really fast, and people can't understand what I'm saying. It's very frustrating. I'm going to be embarrassed, and then also I have my arm in the sling. I'm, I, what are they going to think about? Okay, no, you're right, you're right. Let's calm down and take a deep breath. Okay. Yes. I trust you, okay, and smile, okay, I remember, okay, okay, good afternoon, you guys, <laughs> um, my name is Rosalie Polanco, and I am very, very honored to be here with you today, um, I represent both the Dominican Republic and the United States, since I have grown up in both countries, and um, I like to joke that I was actually born in the capital of La República Dominicana, otherwise known as the Washington Heights here in New York City. <laughs> but I actually left the United States when I was six years old um, so that I can go and live with my mother's family over there. So I really am part of both cultures. And my life is reflects both of those cultures. Inside, when I was little, I felt like the little girl from New York, but I went to move in El Campo, which is like the country, you would say, and I started to be more of a country girl because I lived with my grandparents and my mom, and they had a farm, and soon I became more comfortable with, like, chickens running around in the yard and riding around on horses than, you know, pigeons in the street and riding around on the subway. So, you know, my life there, it was very different than here. Um, there's no TV in El Campo. There's no lights at night. It's like very quiet and peaceful. Or really what I should say is it's very boring. It's very, very, very boring. Um, it was very different from being in the city. And I, sometimes I think that it was so boring that that's why by the time I was noticing boys, I don't know if it was really because I liked them or just because I really needed something to do. <laughs> so. But I met my husband in school when we were little, you know, playing together. Um, actually, he was three years older than me, but, you know, he was always chasing me around, teasing, pulling my hair. And, you know, by the time I was 14, I guess I thought that was love. <laughs> so he was 17 years old. And, you know, with 17-year-old boys, um, let's just say that I come from a very traditional family. And when you're a teenage girl, you don't just get to be free, you know, you don't just get to do whatever you want. It's not like, you know, some of the Dominican kids who I know over here, they got to be more independent, they got to discover more, learning new things. But my mother would say, Rosalie, si tú quieres aprender algo, mejor aprendes en la escuela, ¿tú me entiendes? Which means like, you know, if you want to learn something new, it better be in your classes. <laughs> so, but by the time I was 15 and he was 18, I felt like I was already a grown woman and I wanted to be with him. I believe we were going to be together forever. So, you know, we decided to get married. And it was beautiful. You know, I felt like a princess or like a queen, you know. But then a few months later, it's like the only queen I really looked like, it was uh, the QE2, you know, that big ship, because I was pregnant. I was the size of a boat. Um, and, you know, everything about my life changed. Get married, get pregnant. It was like childhood was over right away. And my husband, he was like, you know, Sally, now you have to be mature, like a real woman. Um, I, I couldn't go to school anymore. They wouldn't take me because I was pregnant. And I couldn't also socialize with any of my friends. It was like, all of a sudden, so depressing. And my husband, he could go out drinking, having fun with his friends, coming home smelling like president, you know, like alcohol or whatever. And it just got worse and worse for me. Um, we started fighting. And the fighting started to get physical. And I hope that after Jesenia was born, um, that's my daughter, I hope it's going to get better. But it just got worse. And at one point, he even started to hit me in front of her. And I remember I was thinking to myself, I'm 17 years old with my baby looking at me, seeing her father doing that. So anyway, I, I got very depressed. I felt very alone. And I felt like I didn't have a future. And my mother was so worried about me, she sent me to come live back over here. But Raymond 
uh, my husband Raymond, he followed me over here. I took him back. Um, and at first it was okay, but then he couldn't find a job. He started drinking more over here, and it was the same thing with the abuse and everything. So I, I'm 20 years old now, and the last two years have been the hardest. Um, I tried to keep Raymond out of my life, but it's very, very hard trying to raise my daughter by myself. And he, he did that to me six weeks ago and in front of my daughter again. And I, I promised myself I'm not going to let him back in, and I haven't let him in since. I know I had to do that for me, but especially for her, so she won't make these mistakes that I did. But I am trying to change. So I only went up to age 15 in school, but I was, you know, even though I was very behind, I started taking classes here in New York, and it's helping me a lot. I even met a couple of other Dominican girls who have kids, um, and we actually started a group together at my school, and the name of my group is called the BAM. Oh, I hope it's okay to say that in the UN. Um, but the BAM, it stands for Dominican American Benevolent Organization for Mothers and Babies. And I know the name is like a little bit long, but, you know, it's a beautiful group because it helps me to know that I do have a future. I'm learning to speak up more for myself, even just like being here today. That's how Equality now found me, through the group. But, you know, even though I wasn't here last time for the Beijing event, I was only 10 years old. And five years later, I was a mom myself. So when I think about that, and I tell people my story, and, you know, sometimes they want to blame my situation on my background, that I'm Latina, or the laws in DR, but I always remind them, especially Americans, you know, in a way it's very appropriate that I am speaking for the United States right now, because the laws here, they allow early marriages too. In states like Mississippi, Mississippi Arkansas, and before people want to stereotype that it's only in the South, guess where the age for girls is even earlier than in DR? It's New Hampshire. That's north of here. So, you know, that's not very liberated for a state where the motto is live free or die. So I just believe that, you know, people might not recognize how dangerous early marriage is for girls. And not just girls like me. I feel like I'm very lucky. You know, in some parts of the world, like, for example, in Ethiopia, nearly one half of girls are married before the age of 15. And then they're dying in childbirth. Their life is taken away from them before they even get to live it. Um, there are places like in Bangladesh where girls are, you know, married before 18, up to 90% of them. And it's like, how can you possibly really have your childhood? And that's what I think about now. What have I missed? What chance would I have had? What opportunity? I think life, being a girl, is hard enough. And the law should at least give us a chance to finish that job before we take on the job of being somebody's wife. So that's all I want to say. Okay, thank you.